Well, Karen Aranda is uh, holding on the telephone. Karen, good morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us here today. Uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, where, where are you this morning? Where do you sit as we speak? Uh, as I sit and where I uh, where I speak, I'm in my bedroom. Uh, my kids are watching Bluey, uh, eating their breakfast. <laughs> um, and we have a full morning, too. <laughs> yes. What, what town are you in, though, I, I guess, specifically? Oh, uh, Hedgesville. Hedgesville, Hedgesville okay. West Virginia. Very nice. So uh, I was told that uh, you are the person who knows the most about the Grand Family Support Group and the meetings that you do at the Tomahawk uh, Ruritan Club. Can you tell me how you got involved in this? Uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, I'm uh, currently the secretary of the Tomahawk Rotan, mm -hmm. and um, it's something that, um, you know, I've really enjoyed over the last two years. And I just felt that um, I'd been reading a bunch of news articles um, about um, it, this growing trend of grandparents who are, you know, whatever the circumstances are, they are they're in a position that they have to um, raise their, their grandchildren. Um, and uh, it's, it was concerning to me that, you know, we need to have a, a place, um, you know, uh, in, in Hedgesville or in, in the Panhandle, if people can travel, uh, where they can find some, like, emotional support, they can talk, they can just, you know, kind of hang with their peers um, and, uh, you know, just have a place to go. So that's where it all started. So you have a, uh, a group that starts meeting, and I guess they started September the uh, 18th, and how mm -hmm. often do they meet, Karen? Um, so we meet every Monday um, at 11 a.m. Uh, the, uh, the location is uh, 12612 Back Creek Valley Road, um, which is right at the Tomahawk Wurtan uh, Club. And how has the turnout been so far? Um, it's been slow going. Um, you know, we, we recognize that there are a lot of things going on in all of these families' lives. Um, and just getting the word out, you were just talking about Facebook, you know, sometimes we put out ads and people don't see it until after the event because there's just so much going on, you know? Um, so it's, it's slow going, getting the word out, but we're, we're in it to win it. We really want to get this, uh, this off the ground. Well, this is going to change that because you're, you're about, you're reaching a lot of people right now who are affected by this in one form or fashion. Uh, let me ask the obvious question here. Do you have to be a grandparent to attend these meetings? No. Um, so that, that's a great question. Um, you do not have to be a grandparent. You could be a great aunt. You could be a cousin. Um, we're really trying to reach anybody who is, you know, an older, um, uh, older kin, um, you know, who is, uh, who is doing this. And um, also, you do not have to be a full-time custodian. You can be just someone who gets, gets the kids 40 hours a week while mom and dad work. You know, that, that kind of thing where, you know, we're trying to reach the grandparents and the older, older relatives who are, you know, really putting the work in, um, even if it's not a legal designation. So those people are welcome as well. Gotcha. OK, John. Hi, Karen. Uh, there's a difference between um, custody and daycare. So is at first I thought this was for for grandparents who or, or extended relatives who essentially had full time custody. But we're talking about also services for the folks who just are, are the daycare center for their adult children to take care of their minor children, right? Yeah, um, I, I, see, I see a need in both cases. And I, I feel that, you know, obviously, if you're a full-time, if, if you have full custody of your, of your grandchildren, that, that is, a, is a huge difference between being just the daycare. However, I, I feel that um, that these two populations can really relate to one another, um, and they can, you know, and they can give tips to each other too. Um, you know, the, the people who are just watching them part time or you know, full time work, um, you know, work hours, you know, they can help with the, you know, the ideas of like, well, what do I do about screen time? What do I do about discipline? How, do, you know, what what's going on with, you know, this or that? Um, you know, and it's really about connecting peers with peers um you know we're we're not trying to make this too uh you know too much of a i don't know structured kind of thing are there structured activities though on 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 this day there's there there's a speaker that comes or is this is this just a, a an unstructured time where people can get together and essentially compare notes or what how is how is this thing put together um so 
far, um, we've been planning just to do, um, you know, uh, just uh, talk um, with like a loose topic, like say, you know, like, you know, beyond just, you know, how's your day going? You know, so what do you, um, you know, what do you think about screen time? Or what do you, you know, what ha- what challenges have you found in the school system? You know, that kind of thing. Very light, you know, topics uh, for discussion. Um, eventually, we do want to get, um, uh, we do want to get speakers. We've talked about um, getting the fire department to talk about fire safety, because that is a, a very important um, a topic that needs to get addressed. Um, also things like um, like estate planning, um, different legal uh, topics. Um, you know, there's 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 so many things that we can uh, that we can discuss, and we'd love to get the uh, the speakers for that. Do we have a sense for the commonality? Uh, you know, what's the primary concern that these the the, the attendees? Uh, have is it? I think it would be terrifying to under the it depends on the circumstances. I guess if if um, the the child's parents have been arrested or or taken away for some reason, then overnight you'd suddenly have a, a foster parent of, of your grandkids. The this that would come with startling speed, and I think it would be terrifying. Are you a resource for and managing the terror? Um. So we are. Um, so all of us are um, are either parents or grandparents. Um, and, you know, none of us are, are, you know, licensed social workers or anything like that. But we do have um, we do have experience, uh, you know, being kids, uh, being, you know, parents and grandparents. Some of us, uh, some of us in the rural and not myself, um, but some of us have dealt with um, taking custody of grandchildren. Um, you know, so there is that kind of background. Um, and then. Um, especially some of my more senior um, members and, and friends at the Rotan, um, we do have a lot of connections in the community. So we're hoping that we can point people in the right direction, um, if need be. Um, you know, if they're if they're having serious problems. But really, we're just trying to um, kind of stem the, the the crisis a little bit, where it's you know it's a little bit of a a break in their day, and they can come and talk. You know meet other people, feel a little bit more normal, you know, where, okay, I'm not the only one going through this. Can they bring the kids? Yes, yes, um, that's a great question. Um, so we, we timed it at 11 a.m., um, hoping to get, uh, you know, the either the, kid, uh, either the grandparents of kids in school, um, you know, they're, they're at, you know, they're at school and they're, they're taken care of, or the young kids who, um, you know, are not are not school age or preschool age yet. Um, so we have activities for them. Um, we have, you know, we have Duplos, we have Legos, we have, um, you know, just little games set up for them. And then we have um, adults who are um, in the same room as the meeting, um, but, like, they are um, tasked with, like, watching the kids. So the grandparents can have a little bit of a break. Do you get a sense of the grandparents most challenged by raising young kids the 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 three to ten year old or is the big challenge in the adolescent years um so i think that there's there's there are issues with both sides um and you know we'll just have to see who you know um uh you know who needs you know more uh you know more support from from these groups but yeah there's it's both it's you know, you have the little kids and they just need so much attention and so much physical, you know, physical needs, right? You have to pick them up and you have to, you know, put them in car seats and that type of thing. Whereas the older kids, you know, you've got rebellion. I mean, starting at like, I mean, it, my, my son is nine and he's already rebelling like a teenager. <laughs> so it just kind of, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of, lot of issues. And it's kind of all rolled into this one thing. So we'll see who, you know, who needs the most. Now, this is a, um, did you say it started a few weeks ago? September mm-hmm. 18 was That's the correct. first meeting, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, but you've talked about some of the more senior members that have been doing this. So is there something that preceded this? Um, no. Uh, uh, you know, Tahamak Rotan is, is just a, um, you know, it's a, it's a nonprofit. And, you know, we do lots of things, you know, for the community. Um, but I I think this is um, one of our first support groups uh, in a long time, or if ever. Well, it sounds like quite a challenge. And the, uh, you have any idea what the population, potential population of 
these uh, custodial grandparents are in our area? Um, I don't know exact numbers. Um, however, I do know uh, that uh, West Virginia is leading um, the grandparents raising grandchildren uh, trend, um, which is already a growing trend nationally. And West Virginia is is leading it along with, I think, South Dakota is the other is the other number one state for this. So we know that this is um, this is a big thing, you know, affecting a lot of people in our state and in the panhandle. Karen, what's your background specifically? Um, my background is uh, I'm a mom, um, uh, and um, I uh, before I moved here, I worked uh, a lot with another non- nonprofit to um, to create um, uh, new mom groups um, mm-hmm. in the Philadelphia area, um, and you know it's a similar thing where all of a sudden you know even though you planned for it, you're suddenly a new mom and you know everything is upside down. Um, so that's kind of. I guess maybe that's the reason why I'm, I'm drawn to this project. How long ago did you move to the Eastern Panhandle? Um, we'll be here, uh, we've been here about um, three years. And what motivated you, I know you talked about this a little bit, but to be that new to the community and then to get this actively involved in something like this? I feel that it's one of the best ways to uh, to be a part of any community um, is to just, uh, you know, get in, get your hands dirty, meet people. Um, it has been it has been wonderful working with the Raritan um, because I get to just I just get to meet such a, a, a wide variety of people. Um, and I get to really, um, you know, uh, keep busy um, and feel like at the end of the day, it's it's doing some good. Uh, were you a Flyers fan when you were in uh, Philadelphia, Karen? No, I, I was not a Philly sports fan, so never hold that against me. <laughs> right, I, I'm from Pittsburgh, so that would have been a deal breaker for me there. It's a cool, good answer on your part. Uh, so, uh, Karen, ultimately, how much room do you have uh, at the Rotan Club for for a meeting? Could you ultimately uh, fit a hundred people? Um, I feel like that would be um, that would be that would be doable. I think that would. That would be also a long. Uh, that would have a, a huge lead up time. Um, we mm-hmm. would. It would take. I think. Um, it would take time to gather that many people. But you know, we'll. Uh, but we do have. Um, we have that many chairs. Um, we have. You know, two large rooms, so we could. Uh, we could make it work. It is the Grand Family Support Group, and they meet Mondays at 11 a.m. at the Tomahawk Ruritan Club at 12612 Back Creek Valley Road. In uh, in Hedgesville, and they've got a Facebook page too. It's uh, Tomahawk W uh, Tomahawk W V Ruritans uh, too. You can find out more about that as well. Uh, what seems to be the biggest need in regards to what uh, grandparents uh, are going through in raising kids, uh, Karen? That you've discovered? Um, I think it's um, uh, and this is just from my perspective. I mean, barring uh, financial help, because obviously. I mean, sure. I can't. I can't imagine the 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 onus of of trying to raise kids when you haven't planned for it, you know, and you are in your you're in your senior years. Um, but I think that um, I think that having some some people to talk to um, can in, can help incredibly. Um, so we're we're kind of hoping that that will meet a, a need that cannot. It cannot ever be replaced with um, with financial support. Um, so really, just you know, having a person to talk to, knowing you can speak openly, um, knowing that you can be a little emotional, you know, in this setting, and people will understand that. You and en- we're hoping that that's the the need we the the need we meet. Do you envision applying for five hundred one c three status and becoming a nonprofit and and, and growing this in that manner? Um, no, um, the, uh, the, the Ruritan is already, um, a, uh, a charitable organization, um, and I don't imagine we'll be trying to create a, our own, you know, uh, splinter group. Um, you know, this is, this is kind of, um, localized right now. Okay. Can anybody in Berkeley County or Jefferson County or Morgan County attend this? Correct. Yes. It, it does not matter, um, your, um, geographical um, you know, address. Um, and again, it's open to um, both grandparents who have full custody, um, you know, older, uh, older relatives, great aunts, great uncles, cousins. Um, 
that uh, that might have full custody or people who are who are just kind of tasked with the the day to day care. And can people make financial contributions to the Ruritan Club and have it specifically targeted toward the Grand Family Support Group? Uh, yes, um, you can definitely um, uh, donate. We have we already have um, uh, funds that are they're earmarked uh, for for different um, things. So this is just a, another one of those things. John, so make your pitch. <clears throat> excuse me. Assuming that, that this builds sort of on the model of an Al Anon and support groups for sort of un, unwilling participants in, or not unwilling, surprised participants in, in family problems. So I, projecting myself into that situation, I think it would be very difficult to take the first step to say, well, you know, I can handle this. I don't, I don't need to reach out for help. So give the pitch for people to take that first step. Okay. Um, I would say that um, we are a welcoming group. We are um, we're easy to talk to. Um, we are not we're not looking for any one particular thing from from the group either. We are um, we are just going to be here to um, to help. You know we we do not have some sort of political agenda. We don't have any sort of spiritual agenda. Um, you can just come here, um, check us out. You don't have to sign up for anything. This is just, it's just here if you need it. And um, maybe you can make some friends along the way. Uh, you know, you can find other people around your age who are going through a very, um, uh, very difficult, but also very fulfilling time of, of your life. Um, so uh, just come on down and check us out. Now, the children are, are welcome. Are they separated from the the custodial or the for the grandparents so that they can speak freely? It'd be hard. It'd be hard to talk freely in front of your kids about your kids, especially sure. while you're watching um, them. We um, so they are going to be in the same room um, as the as so everybody's in the same room um, so that everybody can have sight lines on their uh, on their children. Um, but we have um, you know we have a pretty good amount of space between the two groups. And, you know, once kids get with other kids, um, you know, they, they start to just do their own thing. And mm-hmm. my kids are homeschooled, so they will be um, they will be with the, um, the kids, too. Um, so they'll already have kind of like ready-made playmates um, to, to, to focus on and, you know, start, you know, kind of, you know, saying, OK, well, what's what are you going to play? What are we going to play? And and then they'll just kind of um, they'll do their thing um, and the grandparents can can hopefully focus a little bit um, on them on themselves, um, knowing that the kids are safe and they're you know are right there where they need them. You mentioned something a minute ago that really resonated is I think probably one of the great advantage of a group like this, and that is as an essential clearinghouse to meet other people with similar problems, where you can uh, you bond with have, having that same issue, and it's somebody to go and either call when you just need to rant or to go have a cup of coffee or just to to eliminate that alone feeling that that has to come over i I think that that must be one of the strong elements of what you're doing here definitely definitely um it, it is nice to just then be able to make connections and then you don't have to wait until monday at 11 to to meet that person again you know you can just swap a a you know um, a phone number, um, or you can find out, Hey, you don't even live that far from me. You know, um, this is not a kind of thing where, you know, a new mom, right. You, you have the baby and you're, you're kind of out there and you're, you know, you can meet other people with little babies, right. With this, with this kind of thing, if you're a grandparent raising a, a, you know, a grandchild, you're, you're not wearing a t-shirt all the time saying, Hey, come talk to me. You know, you might just look like an, you know, a, a traditional grandparent just, you know, having the kid for, a, you know, a play date. So um, so I can't imagine how hard it must be to connect with other people um, within this population, because for one, you're all very busy. Uh, all the grandparents and all the kids are, are very busy doing, you know, the, the day to day. And then there's just there's not many ways that you can just say, like, oh, wait a second, you're raising your grandkids, too. Hey, me, too. Let's. Let's get together for coffee. Um, so we're hoping that, that that creates more of a connection within the community. Is there an, also an opportunity 
to deal with the angst that the if if I were put as a grandparent, if I were put in that position, I would have some angst felt toward the generation that I created, right? The, the, the parents of the grandparents. Uh, is, is there a, a way to help people deal with that as well? Um, I think, um, I think again, just, um, just talking and relating to one another, um, you know, hopefully that can, that can clear itself out. You know, sometimes, sometimes just having a, um, a place to vent, um, to, to speak openly and have it out there and be done with it. Um, that can be so incredibly valuable. Um, and so instead of just being in your home with your, with your spouse and the kids, um, where maybe, yeah, you don't want to say that stuff in front of the kids because it is their, their parent. Um, you know, if you have this place and the kids are taken care of, um, you know, just a couple feet away, you know, yeah, you can, you can say openly what you feel. And have it out and, you know, and then a, a weight is lifted off of you, hopefully. West Virginia is the second highest percentage of grandparents raising grandkids in the country. Although there are different situations, many of the parents are unable to take care of the children because of drug or alcohol addiction. For every one child in West Virginia foster care, there are 21 being raised outside of foster care. By kin. Karen, a uh, real quick question on that one before we let you go. Uh, the 21 being raised outside of foster care by kin, uh, are we talking about kids that are in a crisis situation, or is that just the entire general population of children and parents in the state? Um, that I do not know. I, I've looked at those same numbers um, as well, and I have not been able to um, deep dive into, uh, into those numbers. Um, so I'm assuming that those are... Um, that those are, are temporary situations. I don't think that, I, I don't really know enough to speak on it, but that's my general feeling. Okay, if there's if there's that ratio of kids that are in trouble is 21 to 1 that are getting the foster care help, then that means the other uh, part of that ratio is grandparents and families pitching in to help these kids. So uh, we need help out there. And the Grand Family Support Group is attempting to remedy that. And uh, you can be a part of their meetings on Mondays at 11 a.m. at the Tomahawk Ruritan Club, 12612 Back Creek Valley Road. And where can we find out more about the wonderful work that uh, you and the Grand Family Support Group is doing, Karen? Um, mostly we just uh, we post everything to Facebook. Um, so just uh, you can, uh, in the search bar, just uh, type in Tomahawk uh, Ruritan, West Virginia. Um, I believe there is another Tomahawk Ruritan, and they are somewhere in Virginia, um, so it's not them. Uh, it's us. <laughs> so, um, Very good. so the difference is pretty obvious. Uh, so, Karen, thank you for the work you're doing. We appreciate you very much. All right. Thank you so much for having me on. You're welcome. Okay, bye-bye.